Um, and so I think one of the things that a lot of people don't understand about EV charging is that every single EV charger that you can think of in your head is not a charger. The charger's in the car. So the car is the thing that's actually like turning it from DC to AC or vice versa. It's the one dictating how much energy is going into the battery. Right. So what we are is just a an access point. Truly, we're just a door to get to some chargers or to, to some energy, right? So, so the Panda Box does conversion from AC to DC. No, we don't do any of that. We're an AC charger, and then the car, the onboard charger in the vehicle, will do the conversion in there uh, because that's very expensive. The heavy piece probably want to in the car anyway because you want that system to work perfectly. You don't want right. an outside system to tell your car how much it can take because that might cause a lot of problems. <laughs> that would cause fires. Yes. Yes. But yeah, like it can charge any vehicle on the road. It's a higher power charger. So it's a 9.6 kilowatt output, which is about 50% higher than like a standard level two. So there's three levels of charging. You have your level ones, which is basically like every outlet in the room that we're in. Google 110. 110. Yeah, that's a level one. Level two is a Pando charger. There's a big range in the level twos. It goes from like 3.3 kilowatts all the way up to 22, um, which is, and if you know anything about energy, like that's a big difference. One is like a nasty shock and the other one will kill you. <laughs> um, and then, so we're kind of like right there in the middle. That'll give you about 300 miles of range, you know, over an eight hour time period. So you can go from about zero to 100% in your car overnight. And that's really what anybody actually needs. And the more data we get actually suggests that most people don't even need that much. We see most people charging from 20% to 80%. And the reason a lot of people do that is that is the happy spot for the battery system. If you, right. So if you keep their battery between 20 and 80%, the likelihood that that battery is ever going to degrade or go bad is extremely low. And that's something that a lot of people, like one of the things that was talked about with EVs was like, oh, well, the batteries are really expensive to, you know, uh, swap out if they break. That's true. But if you maintain and your battery, it's just like your engine. Like if you make sure you keep getting the oil change, it's unlikely that you're going to have all, you have to replace the engine. It'll last, it should theoretically will last like forever. Really? It'll last an inc incredibly long time. Like uh, there's so many stories that from, you can go back and look at the original Tesla Model S's that have come out that have you know hundreds of thousands of miles on them already and the, the, the degradation is like four or five percent on a car that has a hundred thousand miles on it or right and it's because they've been properly maintaining the battery like if you keep it just in that range typically it really won't ever have any issues once you go outside of those ranges it's fine to do it occasionally but if you if you constantly are like going all the way to 100 all the way to zero and back and forth it's a similar type of problem of right. uh, hot cold right so if you let it go too hot or too cold you're going to have some problems.